Okay, so I'm gonna put these eggs into the bowl and they're on a pot here. So I'm gonna get the pot going. We're gonna get the water warmed up and we're gonna warm up these eggs. Um, I don't wanna get them really hot. I just wanna get them warm. So it mentions here to um, combine the eggs and sugar. Now it does say put them in a 20 quart mixing bowl, but that's from an old recipe where it was much larger. So the sugar goes in. And uh, while that's getting warm, we're going to grab a glove. Because all I do is I just take a, uh, I take my hand and put it in there. And I stir, stir the sugar around. Now, what, what's the warmth doing? Well, when you're heating up, heating up eggs and sugar, what happens is that the heat is going to help relax the protein. And it's going to make it more receptive to air. And that's the whole purpose of the following method is to whip eggs to incorporate air. So the process of whipping eggs with sugar to incorporate air, when mixed with other ingredients, the air is trapped in the batter and the batter expands when heated and the product is their leaven. This, this particular cake has no baking powder or baking soda in it, it's just air. So that's why it's a great example of how the foaming method works because there's nothing to help that air out. And it's all based on how much air you're able to get injected into that, into that egg mixture. So as I stir this around, the heat's going to relax the protein, but it's also, the heat is also going to help the sugar dissolve as well. And that's one of the big benefits. Now this is whole eggs, so it's egg whites and yolks. So there is fat in here from the yolks, but we will get a nice, a really nice egg foam going. I've got this uh, turned all the way up, so I'll give this a chance to warm up the water a little bit. I'm just going to get it up to bath water temperature. You know, just maybe 105, 110 degrees, just enough so that it has a chance to dissolve that sugar and it also has a chance to uh, warm up the eggs a little bit. Then we'll put it on the mixer and we'll whip it until it's at full volume. So we'll get the maximum volume out of it. From there, it's a very simple operation because all we do is then we fold in flour, which will help stabilize everything, a little bit of vanilla, and We'll put it in a, in a prepared cake pan and we'll bake it off. And it's a very simple cake. This cake is um, by itself uh, a very, very old fashioned type, type of cake. Um, comes from time before baking powder and baking soda. So all they had was eggs to work with. And um, it's probably been around since the late 1600s, maybe the early 1700s, that they started using this style of cake. But it's, as I say, it's a great example of how, how air can be your only leavener and eggs can do it all. The one thing about eggs that I've always said about baking is if we didn't have eggs, we would, be, we would, have, we would miss out on maybe 80% of all the baked goods we know. There's so many things that rely on eggs. Whether it be eggs foamed up, whether it be eggs mixed in, to help moisten, other times they're mixed in to help form an emulsion, but whatever they're used for, they're the only ingredient that starts off as a liquid when you're mixing and turns into a solid when it's baked. It's very unique, no other ingredient does it. And so far, uh, in, all, in all the vegan baking I've done, I cannot find anything from the, from the vegetable kingdom that does what an egg does. Um, now, if it has eggs in it, vegans won't eat it. Uh, I used to be a vegan, I know. I never ate eggs when I was a vegan. Um, but nothing will coagulate like eggs do. There are egg substitutes, you know, people do it all the time. They try to substitute an egg, but it won't, won't behave like an egg. So um, that's the one thing that is a darn shame, is I can't seem to find anything in the, in the plant world that will do what an egg does. So this is starting to warm up. I can feel the eggs are starting to get like lukewarm now. And uh, we're not gonna go too much further. We're just gonna get it to a point where it's pleasantly warm. And I keep them moving like this because I don't want the heat to get too intense. I don't wanna cook the eggs, right? I don't wanna have scrambled eggs. I just want liquid, warm, warm liquid eggs and sugar. 
So I'd say that's about enough. I can feel it's getting to be about like the temperature of a nice warm bathtub. So we'll just transfer that right over to our mixer. And we're gonna whip it full speed. So read this whole volume. Let me turn the camera so you guys can see what's going on. Now, how do I know it's full volume? Well, it's gonna inch its way up the side of the pan. I'm gonna be watching it. But as it comes up and it rises up little by little by little up the pan, I'm gonna watch it get up higher, higher, higher. And when it stops getting any higher, I know it's at full volume. If it starts to recede at all, then I know it, I've gotta get it off of here and, and work with it. But you'll get quite a bit of volume out of, this, out of whole eggs. Even though it seems to defy all the rules you've thought about egg whites, Together, they, they whip up very nicely. Good. So it's getting lighter and lighter in color and uh, really getting full of air. Remember, all this air that I'm putting in it is what's gonna make sure that it has a good size, good volume in the cake but also to make sure that it holds its, uh, that it leavens properly, it rises up in the oven. Now the other thing I'm doing here is this recipe calls for a little bit of butter. So I'm floating this little piece of butter in hot water to melt it while we're getting this whipped up. Uh, normally butter is in fat, so that would normally cause this to collapse, and it can cause it to collapse a little bit. But it adds a lot of shine, adds a lot of flavor. So butter is a very traditional last little thing we put in. This is coming up pretty nicely now. And I think we've just about we've got to highest volume now. We're about to maximum volume. Yeah, I don't see it getting any higher. There's a step in this recipe that calls for stabilizing the egg foam. It says stabilize the mixture by whipping on medium speed for up to 10 more minutes. I would say we can get it on low to medium speed and just allow, we get up to 10 minutes. So, uh, so it looks like we've reached maximum. I'll turn it on down. Now, they call for stabilizing the, the egg foam because when you first whip eggs, you're gonna have some bubbles that are really big, some bubbles that are really small, and some that are right in the middle. When you go at a slower speed like this, um, the egg foam will stay at full volume, but the biggest bubbles will pop. And when they pop, they'll become smaller bubbles. The little bubbles will find each other and become medium bubbles. So in about two to five minutes of stabilizing, you're gonna find that your foam looks different. It'll look smoother. It'll look more satiny. It'll have a nice sheen to it, a little bit more of a, a steady and even sheen than it would when it was first whipped. And what that's an indication of is the light is reflecting off of your eggs and it's all medium-sized bubbles. They're all the same. What that does, it makes this foam a little more stable. So it's really, a, it's a good step to do. But they say you've got it for 10 minutes, which is really kind of a nice thing to know because let's say you did this, right? You got your foam ready, but you didn't have your cake pan ready. Now you've got it for 10 minutes. You can run, get a cake pan, get a piece of paper, spray it. Um, you know, if you forgot to measure an ingredient, you could run and measure an ingredient. You've got up to 10 minutes to, to do this. So if you really need it, you might need it the time, this buys you the time if you need it. And it won't hurt the foam at all. So while that's stabilizing, we're going to refill the camera. Because we're going to fold this flour into it. My butter is melted. Now it's been sitting in that hot water. And like I say, if you do about two minutes or more, 
and up to 10 minutes. You can stabilize your phone very nicely. So I always try to keep my phone moving. So that created a really nice foam, as you can see, really nice. And um, nice and stable. In order to get this butter in here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of the foam, we're gonna put it in the butter. I'm gonna sacrifice this little bit of foam to get it mixed with the butter. Because if I then fold this mixture into that, they'll play nicer together if there's some egg foam in, in with the butter. I'm also going to put the vanilla in with this so that it's all together, it's all there. And this way, these, these foreign ingredients will play, not, not play a lot nicer with the egg foam and cause less chance of a collapse. All right, so our next step here is to fold in our flour. So we're just going to fold in, I'm going to take some of the flour, I'll put it in, and we're just going to fold. When I fold, I always turn my bowl, so I'm just going to keep turning and folding in the flour. Once I see it disappear, I put a little bit more in. I'm just going to fold, 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 get all that flour in there. The flour is just going to act as a stabilizer as well. Once it bakes, um, the eggs will set, but the flour will kick in and will do what it's supposed to do, which is help form protein networks across those eggs and make for a nice, a nice stable finished product. Okay, that's disappeared. Put the rest of that in there. Now I'm trying to be as efficient as I can when I fold because I don't want to lose it. I don't want to lose much of this foam. And every time I stroke this and, and every time I uh, fold, I'm losing a little bit of foam. So I just have to be aware of that. I don't want to sit here forever and fold because I could lose an awful lot of the foam. Okay, and now comes the butter, right? The butter that's been mixed in with the vanilla and the fat, or the vanilla and the egg mixture. Just gonna put that in and fold it in last. Now we're ready. Let's say it's a very simple cake, but this is exactly the kind of cake that my grandmother used to make, and then she would yell at us boys for running around the house because we would cause vibrations, and it could cause your cake to fall. So she used to, she used to lock the door. <laughs> she, we had a door in our kitchen. She put a lock on it to make sure we couldn't come in the kitchen because Every time she was making something like this, it's delicate, you know, and it could end up uh, causing the cake to fall. And we boys didn't know anything. I mean, we just being typical boys running around being crazy. All right, so that's the batter. You notice I'm not going to tamp it on the surface of the, of the table because I don't want to knock any foam out. I'm just going to put it right in the blodget oven, and we're going to go ahead and get this baked off. This won't take very long. I forgot all about it. So in the meantime, we ran back all the way back to the oven and we got this wonderful sponge cake here. As you guys, as you can see, this is our final result from, from the warm foaming method.